Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Masson from Masson Labs, and today I've got a very special edit for you. These images are all answers to questions in a thread that we posted where I asked, what do you want to see in the next editing video? And each of these images are to solve one of those problems. So it's all community images. Um, it's going to be a, a really good time. We're going to cover a lot of ground. So let's dive in and hopefully this will help you figure out what pack suits your style and it will also give you some insight onto how easy it is to get really beautiful images with Mass and Labs in only three steps. It's really, really easy. All right, so let's dive in. So the very first question that I had was from Patrick DeGraff and he's asking to see a boudoir shot. So I grabbed this one here and I'm gonna edit it for you. So in general, uh, I kind of approach boudoir with two different packs. If you're doing something that's very like dark and moody like this, you're, you're gonna find your solution probably within the portrait push pack. That's what this pack is made for. Uh, it's a lot of different portrait films pushed in development. So pushed meaning uh, you are intentionally underexposing it I'm talking about real film while you're shooting it. And then in development, you tell the lab to push it to compensate for that exposure. Long story short, you get a, a much moodier look. So here we go. Um, and this is a moody photo. So I'm only going to apply uh, my favorite out of the pack is Portra 160 push two stops. It's got this kind of really nice red brown undertone in the shadows, which I love. Uh, so I apply the preset, that's step one. Step two is you want to uh, adjust your exposure. And then step three is adjust your temperature and tint, so your Y balance. So I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna add just a little magenta because I saw that the highlights in her skin up here were just a tiny bit green, just like you could barely notice. But that is kind of the base for the edit. And now you can decide if you want to leave the contrast at this level, if you want to have kind of the sharp contrast from the windows and then it's darker underneath, the couch is really dark. So there's no light being reflected back up into her face. If you want to like bring out more shadow detail, what you can do as kind of a bonus step four is apply one of the tone profiles. And in this case, I'm going to do shadow soft. And that just opens up the shadows just a tiny bit. If I wanted to, I could actually do all soft, which opens up the shadows and brings down the highlights and kind of softens the image all the way around. So here it is with shadow soft. And here it is, uh, whoops, <laughs> here it is with all soft. You can see it kind of knocked down those highlights and muted them. I think I actually like all soft even more. So there you go, that is your boudoir edit from a raw file to a finished beautiful photo in just a few steps. And that's from, that's using Portra 160 push two stops from the Portra push pack. So there you go, Patrick. I hope that helped. Uh, yeah, boudoir is amazing. Okay. Next question we had. So Panda Rogers far asked, edit some mirrorless images. Um, also show more how to make your subject stand out from the background. All right, I got something for you. And I'm gonna cover a question that comes up in the group. So we got this amazing, uh, stunning, captivating portrait uh, by Kirsten Maverick. I love her work. And this is shot with a mirrorless camera. This is shot with a Canon R6. We licensed this image and we showed in black and white but I wanted to show a few things with this image because we also had someone ask about um, adjusting difficult uh, tint, so green or you know magenta, like a, a white balance issue. Uh, we've also had people in the group asking about why is the color kind of funky on the Canon R5 and R6, and I thought I would kill two birds with one stone. So here we go. So this is a shot with the R6, and I'm gonna do a quick edit with I mean, we're, we're in, we're in, uh, well, I think, let's go a little bit lighter. We just did portrait push. Let's do, let's do lifestyle every day. I love this pack. This is like easily one of my favorite packs. It should get a lot more love, but it's got some good looks in it. 
Um, it's got Acros, which is like moody AF, black and white, my favorite black and white. But it also has two really good color films, Superior 400 and C200. Um, and I'm going to address some stuff here. So I'm going to apply Superior 400. I'm going to adjust exposure up a little bit, and it's a little bit too warm for my taste. And I'm bring down the temperature, and it's a tiny bit green. So I'm going to bring up a little bit of magenta, but not too much because I don't want the sky to go purple. That's that's not good. Okay, oh, a little more magenta. Okay, so here is the deal, everyone. Canon R5, Canon R6, the colors are pissing you off. You know why? It's because Adobe didn't quite nail the color profiles for those cameras. There's nothing that we can do really uh, right now. We're gonna we're going to do something to make it easier for Canon R5 and R6 users as we wait for Adobe to, to get their act together. But what you can do if you're one of those users is go into the little profile browser here on the side, open that up and go to the camera matching section. These camera profiles are ones that come with that camera. They come with that camera and when you open up Lightroom, it populates this profile browser with them and the one you want is Camera Faithful. So faithful or neutral, well, not, no, faithful. Faithful is the one that we kind of all decided on as a group. So if you get a camera faithful, yes, it's going to look kind of funkadelic for a second. I'm going to close the browser. And now if, if I would have actually started with camera faithful, um, we can get even better color. So go to camera faithful, do some slight adjusting. And now you have a beautiful portrait. So let me go back in time again. So here is before, here is after. If you don't have camera faithful, you just use Adobe standard, I believe is what is on this uh, look. It gets very dull and it kind of takes all the color out of it. Um, it also doesn't have quite the right contrast. So if you're having any issues with your Canon R5 and Canon R6 photos, you need to use Camera Faithful. So I hope that helps. This image has some really weird color cast to it. Uh, we've got yellow kind of coming off of her, her like turtleneck thing that's coming up into her eye sockets just a little bit. But with Camera Faithful and carefully manipulating temperature and tint, you can get a really beautiful photo like this. And I'm keeping an eye on her jacket here. We don't want that to go to magenta, so maybe I'll actually bring it down just a tiny bit. To about there and now that seems neutral everything seems neutral it looks good uh, we could do maybe highlight soft to bring down the sky just a little bit so if you wanted something that's a little more uh, less colorful not as superior or e <laughs> could always go to um, one of my favorites which is Natura 1600 in the night and day pack and just get a totally neutral edit um, of course I have to go back here again and Pick camera faithful, yada, yada. Um, hopefully Adobe will fix that issue soon. <clears throat> if you Google it, you'll see there's like hundreds of thousands of people that are upset about it, us included. So here is an edit with uh, Natura, which is just, damn. If you don't have the night and day pack, you are just so missing out. It is not, it is unlike any other pack. Got an awesome black and white in here. You've got Cinestill if you want to do something kind of cinematic and moody um, and or nighttime. And then you got Natura 1600, which is like my favorite overall look. Just use it all the time. So there you go. Hope that helps. We killed two birds with one stone or several birds. So hope you enjoyed that, Panda. Okay, next. Um, oh, so Ashley Hubbard asked, fixing white balance. Uh Mostly get it right in camera. You can go from cloudy to sunny in seconds when shooting outside. Getting greens properly tinted is a huge task sometimes. Okay, so let's go to a green, a photo with some green in it. Um, this is one of my wedding photos from a wedding I shot a long time ago. Uh, it's got a lot of green in it, and I just kind of pulled it in here so we could look at it. I'm going to just <clears throat> go right in and do Fuji Original. So if you're into the light and airy look, everyone knows this pack at this point. I mean, everybody does. So Fuji 400H. 
And then I'm going to warm it up just a little bit and increase the exposure just a tiny bit and then do all soft. That's kind of my personal formula with this pack. Um, I would also add like lens correction just to get rid of that vignetting. And now you got just like this killer black or not black and white light and airy photo. And this is one of my photos. I hardly ever show any of my photos. Uh, I love the community photos the most, but here's one of mine. Yes, and I know that she is slightly out of focus, but I just love this moment. Okay, so how do you manage greens? We've got entire videos on this on YouTube. So just go to YouTube, go to how to tame and maintain your greens, mass and labs. It is like the be all end all video on greens, everything you could ever wanna know. But here's a quick tip. In the Fuji original pack, if you use Fuji 400H, we made an alternate version of it. That is one of the only things we've ever made that doesn't track to real film. But what it is, uh, it's Fuji 400H Blue. In fact, it's the only thing we've ever made that isn't true to film, exactly. Why? Because it knocks greens down even a bit more. So you click on it and the greens kind of go away even more. So if you want to really bring bright greens down to more of a sage or neutral green, even if you're on a golf course in the middle of the day and that's just how it looks, you can use Fuji 400H Blue and it'll solve that problem. So I hope that helps. All right. Next question. Uh, let's see. The use of Mass and LUTs with DJI devices. I don't have any uh, images like that right now, but if you send them in, if you go in the group and send them in, I will edit them for you so we can look. Uh, Marcos Valdez asked for fashion editorial shooting. All right, what do we got? Um, I pulled this. This is by, well, I will find out who this is by and put it in the comments. But this is a fashion editorial image that we licensed. Um, it's shot with a strobe in a studio. So I thought maybe this would be a good one to kind of show some fashion editorial stuff. All right, so what am I gonna do with this? Well, I think I could go again two different ways. We could do something with Portrait Push if we wanna go just super dark and moody. Maybe, I don't know, Portrait 400 Push two stops. Okay, I know, it looks way too dark. That's fine. The original is quite underexposed. So apply Portrait 400 Push two stops. You're gonna do the three-step workflow. We're gonna bring it back up with exposure, I mean, Took me like a second. Go to temperature and tint, and we're gonna dial that in. So I just increase the temperature. I'm kind of cruising around her face. Um, I don't see any bad color casts anywhere. Looks pretty good to me. It's not too green, not too, not too. I almost said Jamaica. It's not too green, it's not too magenta. So it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna do maybe all soft to kind of tame those uh, kind of shinier skin parts. And then I would go in with um, a brush and just do like a little bit of skin softening. So you can go into effects and I've got some ones I've made in here, but there's a skin softening one. And I would go in and just like brush in her face and kind of take care of um, some skin stuff. Because when you use a bare bulb flash like that in a dark environment and you got that contrast, it's gonna bring out pores and things on your skin. Um, that you may want to smooth later with a brush. But anyway, that's just a super basic portrait edit. I think it looks really good. You could also do, um, I'm gonna reset it. You could also go, okay, again, I'm not trying to fanboy the, the pack that we just made again, but I'm going to, because a lot of people still haven't purchased it or tried it because it just came out, but the night and day pack, why is it so amazing? Uh, it's built for studio work. It's kind of like, uh, literally it's called night and day because it's for nighttime shooting and daytime shooting. It covers the whole thing. Why? You can use um, Natura or uh, Cinestill if you want to do kind of, again, a very stylized studio portrait. Um, it's a tungsten based film, meaning that it is a very blue film. It's, it's a film that is the actual film is color balanced for orange or yellow tungsten lighting. So when you shoot it and you use more of a daylight light, which I think they did in this, 
Um, this is with a flash, so it's like more daylight balanced. You get very blue tones, and I think it looks really cool. So that's like another look you can get with Cinestill, which I absolutely love. And I mean, there you go. That, that just looks really, I don't know. That's a cool look. Okay. Also, you've got Natura 1600 in the same pack. So we kind of just went from night to day. <laughs> night, day. Natura is a daylight balanced film. It is so wonderful, the contrast and the skin tones, that it works really well as a studio solution. So Natura 1600, and then you can use um, Strobe Soften, which is a tool that is currently only found in the night and day pack. But what it does is it further softens um, strobe and studio lighting to give you a smoother kind of film effect, even with more complicated lighting setups. So um, there you go. That just, again, looks really fantastic. Yes. Okay. Let's move on. All right, next question. This video is going to be like 10 hours long. But I, I heard in the comments that someone was like, why is it so great watching someone else edit? It just is. When you're a photographer, you like to see people edit. It's fun. Okay, editing. So Tiffany Matthews asks, editing images in dark venues. I love my Mastin with my outdoor shots, but I struggle with those moody interior indoor venues full of dark wood. All right, I happen to have this from a previous live edit, I think, uh, but it, I think it, it, it kind of shows what you're talking about. This is by McKean Osman, so another community member had submitted this, but if you're looking for, like, how do you deal with dark wood inside of a church? It's just dark, dark, dark. How do you make that look good? Um, uh, I would do, in an environment like this, I would do maybe, I always want to go back to night and day. Oh, God help me. I won't touch it. I, maybe I'll do it as a second example. Um, I can't stop myself. Okay, I'm going to do gold 200. I think gold 200 might be great in here. So this is from the Adventure Everyday Pack. <laughs> I have a craving for Natura that I cannot control. Um, but we're going to do gold 200 because it's also one of my favorites. So... Gold 200 in a dark church, it, it's going to give you kind of jade, like blue-green, slight shadow tint, which I love, and warmer skin tones. And I think that makes a church interior with all that dark, lacquered wood look a little cooler and more interesting. So I applied Gold 200, and I've just increased the exposure. The way our presets are built, they emulate the way that film reacts to light. So you can crank up the exposure pretty high and nothing bad is going to happen to you. If you think the highlights are getting a little bit too bright for you, um, you can always just use um, all soft. Whoops. Ah. All soft or just highlight soft like that. And it brings it all back in. So that's like a three click edit in a dark wooded, <laughs> woody church. Um, so I hope you like that. And I would even use another tool we have, uh, Auto Transform, which should, yeah, straighten everything out. It's like magic. <laughs> so a lot of good tools in the toolkit. Auto Transform on, uh, maybe even lens correction. Does it need it? Oh, yeah, if you want to go even a little lighter. So there you go. Um, I'm not doing real hard work here. We just have a really good system. It's really easy to follow. If you watch the tutorials or just do the three-step system, and you notice that I am not messing with anything on the main develop panel. I'm not in the HSL. I'm not in the color area. I'm not changing any of that. It, in fact, the only way to screw up our system is to make it complicated. So just stay away from that panel, from this panel. Don't go, don't go below the basic panel. Just leave it alone. I know with a lot of other presets and things out there, uh, you have to just like mess with everything to even get close to a good edit. Do not do that with us. Don't. Just don't do it. We have something over here in the pack that will help you do it and do it the same every time. So there you go. There's a gold 200 edit. There's before. There's after. Okay, I can't help myself. I'm going to have to use Natura because I just want to see what it looks like. Okay, so there's Natura. Oh, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. I don't know. I love Gold 200. It's like the film I shoot the most, the actual like film. 
but I am just Natura is my jam. Look at that. It's it almost looks like a light and airy photo inside a dark church, which is nuts. And then if you add strobes often, it looks like I don't know, whatever. I can't. I can't even. Okay, let's move on. All right. Um who else do we have here? Okay, Jose Medina, one of our all-star helpers in the group. Um, he's amazing. If you ever need help, he's the guy to ask. I mean, we all work there and we try to help, but he goes above and beyond. He's amazing. So Jose is asking for night photography or low light situations and Sinistil. All right, let's go over here. Oh, did I say who did that last photo? I just want to give a shout out. Oh, yeah, I did. McKean Osman. All right. We got another user community submitted image. Uh, this is by Kristen, uh, Kristen Soleil. I hope you said your name right. Uh, it's such a fun picture, um, but it is a very challenging lighting situation. This is something where I think Cinestill would just knock it out of the park. Cinestill was invented for full-length feature films, shot with this kind of lighting. So this isn't flash. I mean, maybe there's a little flash, fill flash, but it's mostly like lit from the sparklers, which are kind of in the tungsten area of white balance. And Cinestill is made for this. So it, here's Cinestill. You see how it separated the background and the foreground? Like now we have like some kind of color back here. It's neutralizing a lot of that tungsten light. So that's just clicking on it like that. Um, I would then go into temperature, maybe drop it down just a, a little bit more. Not too much. I mean, this is supposed to be warm. It's not, we don't want to neutralize it to where like they're in a hospital or something with fluorescent light. I don't know, but you can neutralize it a little bit. Okay. So there is Cinestill. Looks really good. There's some other cool tools just in this pack also. There's also because it's the night and day pack. What happens at night? You're shooting at a hell of a high ISO. This is shot at 10,000 ISO. Unthinkable when I started photography, but now it's like, you know, no big deal. Let's just shoot it at 10,000, but there's a lot of noise. We also have a tool in this pack called dynamic noise reduction. And what it does is that it tones down the noise dynamically according to the ISO, but also Kind of makes it more filmic. So we're not, we don't have like Barbie doll, like everything melted plastic smooth, which is bad noise reduction. We have a very natural noise reduction. So that makes this look good or helps to make it look good. There you go. Beautiful edit, Cinestill before, after. It's just made for this. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could go into Photoshop and add the little blooms around everything. Let me do that real quick. Okay, here we are. Okay, so now we're back into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you the effect, the, the really cool um, effect with uh, the blooms, Cinestill blooms. Okay, so we're gonna go to actions. We're gonna go to Cinestill halations. There's a little night and day pack um, folder here and you're just gonna run that. And now you have these kind of funky um, blooms that happen around really bright light sources. This, you know, this may or may not be something that you like or want, but it it is something really cool and you can adjust it further if you want. So if this is like too much for you, uh, you can go in and adjust the bloom or the amount that it halates out. You can even go to the uh, halation control section here and you can reduce it if you want. You can reduce how much is happening. So if I want to just bring it down, I just go to the opacity and I can bring it down. And now that's kind of an acceptable amount. So I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go back to Lightroom. And now we have the halation version. So, so you've got, come on, here's, here's without the halation action. And here it is with, I think it looks pretty awesome. I like it. 
So I hope that helps. All right, let's move on here. We've also got uh, taking out color casts. I did that with the other portrait. Um, Papa, how to edit my bank account so I can afford to buy all presets? I don't know how to do that. Otherwise, I would do that to myself. That's a great question, Britt. Okay, um, let's see here. How to edit annoying, so this is by Adam Hyman. How to, edit, how to edit annoying baby red splotchy skin. All right, let's do it. So, first of all, let me, let me just show you an example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Natura because I'm just hooked. So there's Natura. Go to Exposure. I'm going to bring it up. Go to White Balance. Kind of get that dialed. And then uh, Tint. I mean, it's a little bit too warm. Uh, tint looks fine for now. Maybe it's a little bit magenta. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to do All Soft. All right. Basic basic baby edit. So before, after. Now, here is your science lesson for today. Baby's skin, when humans are born, our skin is like super thin. It doesn't get like thick and jaded like my skin until you're older. But when you're born, it's like paper thin. And what happens is you see capillaries under the skin. So if I zoom in, this baby's skin is already blotchy. Why? Because there's blood vessels that are just barely below the baby's skin. We don't have that issue. As we get older, our skin gets thicker. We get tougher, tough against the world. But there's a little bit of blotchiness, and everyone faces this all the time. Here is the solution. We have, again, a YouTube video on this, but it's real simple. Just go into the eight. This is the only time I want you to touch HSL. We may bring out a, some tools for baby skin. But go into HSL. Go to the simplified view, go to red, and then go to the luminance slider and just bring it up a little bit. And just like magic, and you can do it with a magenta because magenta and red like overlap. They're very well connected. So you can also do it to magenta. So bring up the luminance in magenta and in um, red and you get rid of the splotchiness. So I might even bring it up a little bit more. There you go. That's how you do it. That's it. Go into the red and magenta sliders, bring up the luminance. And what you're doing is you're blending those blood capillaries under the skin. You're, you're increasing how bright they are to match the rest of the skin and the blotchiness will disappear. It works with any preset that we make. Just go to the HSL, go to the red channel, bring up luminance a little bit and you're done. So I hope that helps. All right. Uh, let's see here. Paige Keith asks, can you edit some wildlife landscape shots? Yes, I can. I was just in Moab, uh, well, a couple months ago for my friend's bachelor party and we did some overlanding and, uh, I took some photos. So here are some of the vehicles we traveled in and we're like sitting on a cliff. We're about to set up camp and I'm going to edit with Ektar. Uh, Ektar was just newsflash, Ektar was made for landscape photography. It's supposed to look kind of like a bright slide film, like very vibrant, but Kodak wanted to make a film that looked like slide film that wasn't as hard to make as slide film and easier to use, much easier to use than slide films. So they made Ektar, which is like colorful like slide film, but it's a color negative film, which means it's very hard to screw up the exposure, which means it's very easy to shoot. So it's made for that. but. Everyone in the community uses it for portraits because it's so vibrant and beautiful. But we're going back to its roots, which is landscape. So Ektar 100, I applied it. We go up a little bit in exposure. I'm going to go a little bit up in temperature. And yeah, now you just have this amazing photo. Um, this was a great trip. And that's as easy as it gets. If I want to bring in the sky a little more, I could do like highlight soft. And it looks great. Yeah, look at that. Easy peasy. So before, after, um, doesn't need any lens correction. That's it. That's it, my friends. And here's one more nighttime photo. Uh, you can't even see anything. It's so dark. We're going to do, Ektar is like really contrasty, so we're not going to do that at night. It's not made for night. It's not made for nighttime. I do happen to know a film that was made for nighttime. 
You can you guess what it is? <clears throat> so here's Sinistil. <clears throat> here's Sinistil again from the night and day pack. I applied it. I'm going to increase the exposure. I'm going to increase the temperature quite a bit. About there. Whoa, I really underexposed this photo. My bad. But still, looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to do I'm going to do all soft to bring a little bit of that sky back in. And then the dynamic noise reduction. There you go. Pretty cool. This is a beautiful campsite, very hard to get to. If you are an, uh, an overlanding person, it's on the Lockhart Trail in Moab. It's one of the toughest trails, and we almost lost a vehicle trying to get there, but it was fun. So this is before. You can't even see a damn thing. That's after with um, Sinistil 800, and it kind of preserves the cooler shadows and everything of it being nighttime. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um... All right, so Mage, Roxas to Roy, wanted more help to decide what preset to get. And Mage was asking for Fuji Original 160NS or Fuji 400, Fuji 400. And Mage sent in this photo. So let's edit it for you. This is just a straight up edit uh, just to show Fuji 400H on an indoor photo which it isn't usually used for that often. A lot of um, real estate photographers use our Fuji 400H for real estate because it's just very neutral, low contrast, uh, but you can use it for people too. So here is Fuji 400H. It doesn't do a ton inside. I mean, you can see it wasn't like a massive, massive change, but it looks good. And then we're gonna increase the exposure just a little bit, warm it up just a little bit. And as far as like tint goes, I can see maybe a little bit of green back here. So I might increase the tint just a tiny bit towards um, magenta. But there you go. Simple indoor edit. Uh, we could do all soft if you want to bring in that window behind. And there you go, Mage. Before and after. Great photo. They look great. And very true to color, natural looking color. So if that is something you need in your commercial or editorial work, that's a good choice, the Fuji Original Pack. It's not just for weddings. Okay, um, let me see here. Cinestill, one more Cinestill. Uh, Derek Miller asked for Cinestill, love Cinestill. He says, Cinestill for the wind, win. I know nighttime is traditional, but I think it can work quite well in studio and daylight images too. Oh, I did that actually, I just did that. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, and someone in here was asking about full sun. Oh, Sarah Weiss asked bright, glaring midday sunshine. How the heck do you deal with that? Man, isn't that is my least favorite lighting situation normally, but you can deal with it. So, uh, I think this image is, you know, she, we, our subject is right against a bright wall. I mean, you can see it's like direct sun. How would you edit this? I would probably use Portra, uh, Portra Original. We're gonna go back into one of our, uh, this is the first pack we ever made. It's based off of Portra 160, Portra 400, and Portra 800. I shot so much of this film in 20 years, uh, but it handles bright light like this really well because it's very low contrast and it's gonna really maintain skin tones. So let's do, I think Portra 160 is a little bit too dull. It's It's like, the, the most subtle look you can possibly get. We're gonna do Portra 400, go into exposure. Uh, it's pretty good actually. And I'm gonna warm it up just a tiny bit. As far as tint goes, it could maybe go a point towards magenta. I see a little bit of green, maybe like right in this transitional area where it says nails. Um, so I'll go I don't want to go too high though. So it was at 12. Let's do like 14. I don't want, I don't want her to start turning magenta like through here. So, all right. So that's a very basic edit. This is before, this is after in bright sun. What you can do in bright sun is you can go and use all soft to kind of like make it chill out, or you can just do highlight soft 
Or if you want to just leave the highlights alone and bring out more shadow detail, you could do shadow soft. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Do shadow soft. Let me even warm it up a little more. So there's your before or there's your after. There's your before. Uh, what else would work out here nicely? Surprisingly, uh, something from the Adventure Every Day pack may work. Okay, I know it's like bonkers how orange this is, but just hear me out. Like this is my Don Draper moment. Hear me out. Okay, let's start over with um, Ektar. And Ektar, for some reason, does really well when it's just really bright out. Maybe it's because it's actually landscape film. But watch this. So Ektar, uh, did I mess with the exposure? Yeah, I brought it up just a tiny bit. Okay, Ektar. And now I'm going to bring down the temperature just a little bit. Um, I think it still needs those one or two points of magenta. No, actually, I think Ektar's got enough in it. We're going to leave that alone. Okay. Here's our base Ektar edit. It's really fun, colorful, etc. It's a little bit too much for me, the contrast. So I'm going to do, um, I think we're going to do Shadow Soft. Yeah, Shadow Soft. Bring down the exposure just a tiny bit. That looks nice and even. Okay, now what you can do is you can use, where is it? Orange Reduction. So this photo is just like over the top orange. You can actually suck a little bit of that orange out dynamically with orange reduction. And that is how I would edit this with Ektar. All right. So, um, yeah, I hope you all had a blast watching this. Uh, oh, we had one more question. I can't, I'm not, I need to look up who asked this, but someone asked, what do you do with reception photos? Um, you know, flash everything at night. Uh, <laughs> Screw it. I'm just going to go back to the night and day pack <laughs> again. Uh, I would do actually Natura. It's a daylight balanced film. Flash is kind of daylight balanced, or it's very, very close to being daylight balanced, or it should be. And I'm just going to do Natura, raise the temperature up just a little bit, get rid of a little bit of this like kind of magenta ghosting here. They're, they're just light trails. There's probably like a black light somewhere, something behind. Um, but what I like about Natura is that it's able to maintain detail even when there's very little separation between, say, like black hair and a black background on this type of photo. So it's a little bonus photo to show you what I mean. Um, but Natura really works great with strobes. And in fact, you can use strobe soften. <laughs> Yes. And even kind of separate it more. Maybe strobe soften with, I know this sounds kind of nuts, but with shadow hard, it's kind of a nice combo too. So, all right. I hope you all enjoyed that. It's been really fun. It's really great making videos for you all. And I hope this helped you decide which pack fits your style and which pack solves the problems you are having as a photographer right now, because we work really, really hard on two things, three things. We work hard on three things. One is we are the only ones around who are going to give you accurate, true to film color. We test against film. We don't make anything up. And that's very important for a consistent look. Two, we've worked really, really hard on our workflow. It's all about what are the, the least amount of buttons for you to push. So there aren't a million like exposure or contrast plus one plus two plus 0.5 buttons. None of that. We give you tools that are powerful and simple so you can get on with your life. And the third thing is we have amazing customer service. You can reach us anytime, either in the group or through our customer support, and we will help you immediately. We love to help you because we want to see you succeed. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video. We have a ton more videos on YouTube. If you go there, be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss one. And yeah, it's just a great way to learn. And we're, we're really rooting for you. We want you to succeed. So have a great day and happy editing.